Okay. At least I got to go out shooting for a few hours earlier today. Hooray! And it's hot as hell out there, too, by the way. Um, the primary reason, and there's not a single professional photographer on Earth that's going to disagree with me on this fact, not a one. Not a one. To know your camera is so that you can forget your camera. Well, that seems contradictory. You're going to know your camera so you can forget it? Yes. The reason why people uh, learn something and learn it and learn it and learn it and they do it over and over and over again is so that it goes to the back of their mind and they can turn what their craft is and forget about the tool. Anytime someone learns a new trade, they practice, they learn what the hell the tool is, everything you can do, they practice with it, they practice, 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 whether that's a violin, a piano, a camera, you practice, practice, you learn it inside and out so that you can forget it. Until you can get to the point where you can forget about your damn camera and it does not become a conscious, conscious thought at all within your head, then there is a limitation between you and the creation of the composition that you want. This is undeniable. This is irrefutable. There's not a single professional photographer in the world that is going to dis disagree with what I just said. It is absolutely, utterly impossible. Every branch of any sort of craftsmanship is like that. You learn your tools, you practice with it, and then you forget about it. Not meaning you try to place it out of your mind, but you make it muscle memory. You make it subconscious so you can concentrate on what your craft is. This takes us into the light. Okay. Obviously, you need to worry about your comp. Not worry. Worry, worry is a wrong, wrong word concentrate on light. Let's talk about three things that no one else has ever talked about before, but they should have talked about. I've not seen this in any book on photography, nor did they teach us this in photography school. And uh, I'm actually the only YouTube photographer that actually makes videos on, uh, on uh, the nature of light itself, but uh, I guess that's irrelevant. None of the photography people give a damn about that. Only the people that are into my book on magnetism and field theory, but so be it. But, you know, it's called photographia, about writing with light. Let's talk about the three principles that you need to concentrate on, specifically in photography. Principles, attributes, and dominance about light. Seeing light, what type of light it is, the attributes of that light, and how to dominate the light. Let's talk about the principles of light that have to be concentrated on. These are the things that you need to, once you forget your camera, but you see, here's here's the difference. Let me make a really quick analogy. This is a prof this is an amateur photographer. Okay, it's concentrated on the camera. Here is a professional photographer. A professional photographer, not literally like this. Analogously, professional photographer. The camera is back here. He's only concentrated. On the camera becomes an invisible tool that is subconsciously controlled by his dominance over that tool. Now we need to concentrate on the composition and the light. There are principles of light that have to be concentrated on. The frequency of that light. Do we have interfering frequencies? Tungsten light, strobe light, fluorescent light, sunlight. Do we need to dominate that? Let's talk about dominance in a second. So frequency, the spectrum of that light. Well, what's the difference between frequency and spectrum? You're referring to the same thing. No, I'm talking about interfering your camera. You know, it's got a white balance. You have to white balance in your camera. You have to white balance in Lightroom. The frequency of the illumination that you're working with. And oftentimes, there is more than one illumination. Not often, but, well, yeah, often. Indoors, you know, street lights, tungsten light, fluorescent lights, xenon light. The spectrum. The colors. Look at the colors. This is also a frequency. But we're talking about multiple frequencies, multiple spectra, multiple different colors within one type of light. You could have different shades of tungsten light. You could have different shades of fluorescent given filtration. We're talking about the actual colors itself. The angle of the light, the attack angle. That's going to tell you whether it's going to be hard lighting, soft lighting, how it adds to the composition or detracts from the comp. You could have the most beautiful, cute little kid in the world and take a picture. Listen the hell up. You better listen the F up right now. Okay? You could have the most beautiful kid in the world sitting on this table. You're trying to take a picture. It's like, oh, this is my daughter. I'm going to take a picture. And you throw some hard, wham, some hard contrast light on that kid. You're going to take something that looks like a cute fuzzy bunny rabbit, that cute little ch kid sitting on the table, and you're going to make him look like a, a zombie ghoul. Okay? The angle, the attack angle, hard light, soft light, contrast, how it's defined, okay? 
diffusion and constriction. Is it going to be soft light or is it going to be constricted? You can make something look soft and beautiful, like semi-nude portraiture by using constricted light by actually defining the contours of the body. Is it diffuse or is it constricted? Is the angle and diffusion and constriction are all directly applicable to hard light, soft light, how it defines the... You know, you li listen the hell up. This is also important. You know, I could take take a picture of someone like this, or like this, or like this, and what will define the character of that portraiture more than this or this or, or that is the type of lighting. It either adds to it, or it detracts from it, or it fights with it. People don't get this. They can take a picture of like a gorgeous chick, and they've got this fighting hard light. It's like, wow, this should have been some soft portrait said it soft portraiture. Instead, it's got some really hard contrast, constricted light. So you've taken somebody that's beautiful and you've kind of made them ugly by using non-complementary light. Mmm, okay. The intensity of the light. I assume we know what we mean by intensity. <whistles> intensity. A lot of light, a little bit of light. Composition. How that defines your composition. How that defines the contours of the shot. So it's not only about the diffusion and constriction and also the angle, but also the intensity. These are all things for the reason why you need to master this tool and then forget it. You need to study it. You need to master it. Practice, practice, practice. Then forget about it. Not literally forget, but make it subconscious. Camera needs to go from here to here. So you can concentrate on the important crap. You're not concentrating on the picture. You concentrate on the camera. The shot's going to suck. Unless you get lucky and spray and pray and go, Brrr. It's like, oh, there's one beautiful shot. Ah, oh, okay. Compositional breadth. What do you call that? Dynamic range. Okay. Someone who's an expert in photography knows how to crush the ambient light or work with the ambient light. You can either reflect it and then you're going to compress the dynamic range or you're going to crush it with ND filters and high speed sync. It's whatever you need to do. A professional photographer, and I've not seen really, I'll tell you what right now. The people that you think that I'm fighting with on YouTube, and I'm not never fighting with them. These people that are like sponsored shooters, and you know, they don't know actually how to crush ambient light. They don't ha know when and why to use an ND filter. They don't know about like leaf shutters. They don't know, and this is so important. You need to be able to. Well, all I've got is a flash here, and uh, all I can do is work with my fill. I know that's not true. What about ND filters? What about leaf shutters? What about sync speed, high speed sync? I want to crush the ambient. Wham! It's like, well, I'm shooting out in broad daylight, and broad daylight is not conducive to beautiful lighting. Well, what about ND filters? Or what if I had like a Fuji XT uh, X100T with a, uh, a leaf shutter, which will sync at any speed? All these things that are super important the compositional breadth, the dynamic range, how you can compress it, how you can make everything work with the way you want. Now I talk about the attributes of light. Those are the principles of light. The attributes. Deflection, reflectivity, the specular nature of light. Is it a hard light? Is it soft light? Is it transmissive light? In other words, like light from a neon sign. Okay, you have light that's being deflected, reflected, specular, or is something actually emitting light itself? Is it emitting light? You could have a scene where you have beautiful incident light and specular light, and then you have this odd sort of thing that is actually emitting light. So deflective, reflective, specular, hard light, soft light, transmissive light, the actual reflectance of the object, which is where we need not an incident meter, but a reflective meter. Because an incident meter is not going to tell you anything about the actual specular, like chrome, like hard light off of chrome. I can stick a, I can stick a spot meter up next to that chrome on the bumper of that car, take an incident meter reading and uh, that's not really going to tell me it's going to tell me the light that's falling on it but that's not going to tell me the specular this is why I need to use an incident meter or a spot meter in the camera or the incident meter on a light meter absorptive how absorptive is the object that you plan on hitting with the flash illumination or the strobe illumination or the sunlight does it actually radiate out a lot of light so the radiation absorption reflective Reflectance, transmission, soft light, hard light, deflection, reflectivity, specular light. Those are all the attributes of the light of the principles that I discussed before. And lastly, dominance of the light. Ambient versus additive. Filling light, layering light, 
controlling lighting ratios. I've got X amount of like, let's say I've got some honking ambient light. I'm shooting, you know, at the equator at 12 noon in Panama, and the light is just wah, and the person's in the shadows. It's like, wow, this is a beautiful composition, but you know, the person's in the dark, and the light back here is just wah. Anybody else are going to scratch their head and go, screw it, this isn't going to work. Somebody that's a professional knows how to take that ambient light and just squeeze his balls and destroy it and just bring it down. Wah! Compress the dynamic range, add some fill illumination. So instead of ambient light being up here and the uh, and the subject being down here, it's like, oh my God, the dynamic range is way. You know, here's the dynamic range of my camera right about here and here, and I got the dynamic range of the ambient illumination and the uh, fill light here and the, the, the person in the shadow here, what I've done is I can, if you got the skills, whoosh, compress it into the dynamic range of your camera. It's how you dominate the light. It's like, well, I've only got a speed light. How can I dominate all this ambient light that's all over the place? ND filters, high-speed sync, uh, leaf shutters. ND filters, leaf shutters, high-speed sync. You do have ways of actually taking out that enormous wah midday light if you got the skills and crushing it. That is a hardcore pro tip of professional photography is crushing ambient light, destroying it, murdering it. <coughs> There's not a single professional photographer on earth that is going to disagree with what I just said. It is impossible. It's irrefutable. It's undeniable. They're going to say, do you agree with that fat tattooed asshole? Yeah, nah, I don't like him, but I agree with him. He's 100% correct. That's exactly right, and that's the only damn point. So the principles of light, the attributes of light, and the dominance of light. you got to take this damn camera. you got to learn it. you got to study it. you got to master it so you can forget about it. Because when this is between you and your subject, my subject is over here. i got my damn camera. i got to I got to screw around with the camera. I'm going to turn the dial here and just... Ah! No, 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 no. This has to go from here to here. That way I can concentrate on that. And until you do that, no. No. You should not be thinking about your camera. If you're consciously thinking about your camera, then you have not used it enough as a tool and mastered it. It's irrefutable. It's undeniable. Thanks for watching this video. And drop me a buck or two or a big fat pizza dripping with cheese because I love those pizza. You know, nothing fat dude loves better than a big cheese. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. Catch you later. Bye.